The artist formerly known as Prince Harry is yet again proving what a self-entitled, self-obsessed, tone-deaf national annoyance he really is. He is threatening to take the UK government to court for refusing to allow him to personally pay for police protection whilst he's in the country. I have a few points on this. Firstly, Armet police cannot be for hire. Harry is now just a Hollywood celebrity. And if the government allows him to pay for police protection, then every single Hollywood star who comes to Britain will expect the same treatment. Would you want to divert police officers away from a stabbing in order to shield George Clooney from the paps? No. So Harry has to realise he's now in the same boat. If he wanted to keep his police protection, he shouldn't have stuck two fingers up to the royal family and legged it off to America to cry into Oprah's bosom. He's simply not entitled to police protection. But of course, the word entitled is something that describes Harry quite well. If he really wanted his family to step up and organise police protection for him, he could have done the dignified thing and attempted to get it sorted behind the scenes. I feel the fact that he's potentially going to take this government to court implies two things. Firstly, that he's burnt every single bridge with his family so badly that there is no line of communication behind the scenes anymore. Secondly, that he deliberately wanted to make this as public as possible, so it suits his narrative of the hard-done-by little prince whose family have disowned him and left him to fend for himself, with only his trust fund for support. But more than this, if I wanted to see my elderly grandmother and introduce her to my newborn daughter and allow her to spend time with her great-grandson, I'd just make sure it happened. Conceivably, all Harry would have to do is get on a plane, get private security to take him from the airport to Windsor Castle or to wherever the Queen is, and then stay within its walls for a few days. Then get private security to take him back to the airport and back he goes to Oprah's bosom. It's as simple as that. Harry and Meghan claimed that they named Lilibet as an affectionate nod to the Queen. Well, they have a funny way of showing affection then, don't they? Because in the last days of Prince Philip's life, Meghan and Harry decided to go on international television and hammer his family, tarnish their reputation and heap misery on our poor Queen. This is Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee year. There will be celebrations throughout the year. And these are now set to be overshadowed by Harry's tell-all book that's due out this upcoming winter. Would you do that to your grandmother? A grandmother who's just suffered the loss of her beloved husband, who will be reeling from having to excommunicate her favourite son from the family and who's recently recovered from illness herself. If Harry and Meghan really just wanted to come back to the UK to introduce the Queen to her great-grandchild, then they could do that very easily. But I suspect what they also want to do while they're over here is make some appearances at some charities so they can offer wishy-washy platitudes towards abused women, give their toe-curling and hypocritical support for some kind of tree-planting commune, or write a message in felt tip on a wall in Lambeth devoted to the plight of the Native American people. Well, if that's what they need protection for, then we certainly shouldn't be diverting our Met Police away from tackling knife crime, domestic abuse, terrorism and drug dealing, so that these two can do a publicity tour of our capital. Prince Harry has told us his truth. Well, maybe now it's time for him to hear some home truths. I think the vast majority of the British public will be perfectly happy, Harry, if you never set foot in this country again.